I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. We still have a lot of painting and cleaning to carry on at uh, finishing off. What I mean is we've still got lots of parts that need to be cleaned ready for painting and like I say this is a process I left out really in the previous episodes so I thought it'd be worth showing you the process of cleaning uh, certainly the degreasing was one of the things that's very important is the degreasing to apply the primer they need to be spotless if they're not if you've still got some muck or some grease in some little tiny corner uh, when you come to paint it, you'll know about it because the little where the where the did the, the uh, dirt is and stuff, the paint will come off. So what I've done, I've invested in one of these. Some of you may be familiar with them. It's an ultrasonic cleaner. And before we go any further please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for the channel as that helps us greatly. This is a 10 litre capacity um, and it's big enough to get all the bits and pieces and parts in for this engine and really any other project or anything else, any other engine that comes in that I need to repair. So just fill up one litre. Let's put that in there. I mean, 10 litre capacity is just up to this line here. You've certainly got to have it covered, certainly up to that amount. And what these devices also have is a heater on them. So you can set the temperature of the water. As I believe sometimes the warmer the water, uh, the better results you'll get. So let's set that off to uh, heat our water up. We're up to temperature now so we can put some of our, our pieces in. Let's uh, lift the basket out. I mean some of these aren't too bad so it won't necessarily be a dramatic difference. I shall just use the, uh, the default setting which is um, normally five minutes. All right, there's the first batch done. And like I say, the difference might not be that dramatic. Oh, I can see the difference. It's a lot, they're a lot shinier. They're a lot shinier. I don't know really if that's showing up well. So let's do another batch and let's go again. Here it is with the lid off and you can see it in action now. These tiny, tiny micro bubbles, the way it works. And these little bubbles explode on the surface of the metal. And as they explode, they remove the dirt. And this is how the cleaner works. Wow, well, I can see the difference on that. I can see the, the shade of the brass, the way the, the brass has changed. This is sparkling. Ready to do some painting now and I mentioned the first thing that we need to do is put some primer on. And you can see there we've got a mixed collection of uh, various shapes and sizes. And these are the ones that um, I'll use the, I'll, I will spray. And we've got some real small sizes, such as this one, that I'll actually paint by hand primer with a brush. but. With brass you certainly have to use an etch primer. There's no way you can just put ordinary the, the paint you want on here and expect this to stay on the brass because as soon as you paint it and it dries you can do that with your thumbnail and it'll all come off. So the etch primer first of all literally etches into the brass to form a firm base to take the final finishing coat. Now we do have some items that are a little bit larger that can't really hold them that well certainly 
the likes of the uh, the rear part of the tender or the rear part of the cab I should say so these I will spray directly while they're sitting on here there's all our parts as you can see that have now had the primer coat and these are now ready for the final coats some are going to be in the GWR green and the others are going to be painted black and these have come out these haven't come out too bad they look like they'll take the coat and I'm going to mix these up for the spray gun uh, this is going to be mixed two to one one part paint to one part thinner right the painting is more is completed now um, you can see there the I'm just showing you the green some of the green uh, stuff I've painted green and it's come out it's come out pretty good so we've got the uh, the outside boiler cladding and the firebox cover and these have come out these have come out quite nice got a nice hard shell on them and the back piece there but what I'm going to concentrate on now is um, some decals or transfers water slide transfers as we call them I want to I've decided to put these on now before the locomotive is assembled and this is the famous name Great Western so the plan is to put one of the water slide transfers or decals onto here um, so that's what we're going to prepare now uh, all we need is some warm water just to soak them off the base and I'm also going to use something called microsol when you slide these transfers off the transfer itself has got to sit you remember one of the early episodes we put some fine rivets on the on the side of the tanks well the transfer has got to sit nicely over these if I were just to apply the transfer as is you could run a risk of getting little creases and little screwed up parts that doesn't sit properly so what this microsol does is actually soften the transfer so it adheres and rides over these raised embossed parts properly so we don't get any nasty little creases or kinks in the transfer spoiling the effect so I will put some warm water in and we'll start to loosen this transfer and apply it to the tank uh, so let's speed up the action now and we'll just go through the process of how I add the transfers and basically we use a scalpel and a soft haired brush and first give it a soak in the warm water just to soften it enough to release it from the backing paper it just takes a few minutes once that's free we can then using the scalpel to just hold things where we want them plenty of water on there. there's a nice film of water there underneath and just gently now teasing it away from the backing paper I see they're using the scalpel just to hold the backing paper into position I find that if you touch that transfer with your fingers it will just stick to your fingers and curl up and you've got a very good chance of ruining the transfer so I find I never touch it with my fingers I'm just teasing it off there and the transfer itself is just floating on a thin film of water and that gives us time to position it where we need it to fit just gently tease it up and down you can take your time because it's on some water now using the brush just to finally get that down there and using a cotton bud there just to now remove the excess water little tweak if it's moved with the cotton bud I'm using this microsol I mentioned and what the microsol does is soften the transfer so it will sit over those raised points and you won't get any little air gaps or any little wrinkles and creases what it does it dissolves the transfer itself if you put too much on it'll dissolve the transfer completely well all the paintings done all the machining's done, all the silver soldering's done, everything's all fitted together. 
and it's finally finished so we'll do the, the big reveal for you there we are all completed all painted up as you can see I hope you've enjoyed this series of 35 videos covering the Gage 1 Prairie Tank Scratch Build. It's always a model I've wanted to build and we finally got one. Um, I won't say it hasn't had its ups and downs, it's had its ups and downs and some head scratching going on now and again, but we finally got there. And for me there's nothing more rewarding than seeing the finished product in front of you. So thanks to everyone who watched the series of videos and made their comments. Um, very much appreciated and we'll be back with you very very soon in the near future with another project for you to follow. Thank you and goodbye.